What's up again, everyone? Thank you so much for stopping by and for joining us as we explore in this lesson on how to find the volume and surface area of a cylinder. Here's a question. What does a cylinder even look like? Well, we actually see them every day in things like paint cans, potato chip cans, and containers of lip balm. Balm is kind of a weird word, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, back to geometry. So in geometry, we have a very standard diagram for what a cylinder looks like. And we could think of this diagram as one of those objects that we just looked at, except that it was made out of glass and totally see-through. And we should also note that all of the concepts and relationships that we are going to discuss concerning cylinders apply to any and all cylinders of any size, shape, or orientation. Okay, so now our next question is, what's the deal with these things? How can we relate things that we've already learned in geometry, things that we already understand, to this new concept of cylinders? We can think of creating a cylinder by starting with a circle and creating a tube-like shape where the size of that original circle does not change no matter where you are inside the cylinder. So this is a helpful concept to understand. So let's go ahead and visualize it one more time. So now let's direct our thinking towards finding the volume and surface area of a cylinder. Now we can find both of these things using a formula provided that we have two pieces of information. That is the height of the cylinder and the length of its radius, which is the radius of the circle either at the top or the circle at the base, or really any of those circles in between that are inside the cylinder. Now we know that volume represents the amount of space inside of a closed figure. So we can think of the volume of a cylinder as how much it can hold inside, maybe if we were to fill up a bucket with green paint. And we know that surface area represents the amount of space it would take to cover up the outside of a figure, like if you were going to wrap it with wrapping paper or maybe spray paint it with some kind of a design. <laughs> cool. So now we're ready to go ahead and familiarize ourselves with the formulas for finding both volume and surface area of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder can be found by multiplying pi times the radius squared times the height. And surface area can be found by multiplying the product of two and pi and the radius by the sum of the height and the radius. And remember that volume is measured in cubic units and surface area will be measured in square units. Okay, so now we're ready to take a look at this example, which is what is the maximum volume of coffee beans that could fit inside of a cylindrical tin with a height of eight inches and a radius of four inches. So next, let's highlight the key information. In this case is that we wanna find the volume of the inside of a cylinder with a height of eight and a radius of four. So to visualize this, we're thinking about how many coffee beans can fit inside of a cylinder shaped can. And since we measure volume in cubic units, we're actually thinking of this, our answer, in terms of how many one inch cubes of coffee could fit inside of this can. So at this point, we can revert back to that simple diagram of a cylinder, and we know that the height is eight, so we can label the height with the value of eight, and the radius is four inches, so we can label the radius with a four. And now we can use our volume formula, V equals pi R squared H. We can replace R squared with four squared, since the radius is four, and we know that four squared is just 16. Then we can replace h, the value of the height, with 8, since the height was 8 inches. And now all we have to do is multiply to get our final answer. Pi times 16 times 8 is approximately 402 cubic inches. And remember, that means that this can could hold approximately 402 of these little 1-inch cubes of coffee. And now we have time for one more example. Here we want to know what is the surface area of a tube-shaped pool noodle that is 62 inches long with a diameter of 4 inches. 
Now the key information here is that we're looking for surface area of a cylinder that is 62 inches long with a diameter of four. First, let's make sure that everyone knows what a pool noodle looks like. I know, they're kind of dumb, just don't worry about it. So we have this pool noodle, which is really just a long skinny cylinder, and we want to find surface area, which really just means how many of these one inch by one inch squares will it take to cover the entire outside of this pool noodle? Hence the reason why we measure surface area in square units. Ooh. So now that we got the concept down, let's move on to the procedure. Now to find surface area, we can start off by labeling the diagram. We know that the length of the pool noodle is 62 inches. And we know that the diameter of the circle of the base is four inches. And we also know that the diameter is twice the length of the radius. So half of four equals two, which is the radius that we need in order to use the formula, which we can now apply. Now we're gonna go ahead and replace the radius, the R values with two since the radius was two. And the length is the same thing as the height. So we can replace H with 62 in the formula. And now we can go ahead and evaluate this. And the surface area of this pool noodle is approximately 804 inches squared. And we are done with this one. Thanks again for joining us, guys. I'm gonna go find my little brother and hit him with a pool noodle. Kidding, kidding, totally kidding. See ya. Look at you watching that lesson all the way to the end. Good job. Now, next thing you gotta do is go over our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash mashupmath. Give us a big thumbs up. We could use the likes. We could use the support. And show us some love. Leave some comments. Let us know what you think. And uh, let me know how my hair is looking today.